Hello, I would like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where today we have a special guest. Please introduce yourself. Hello, uh, my name is Yoav Kaplan. I am the general manager of Quest Vision Concept from uh, Largo, Florida. And I stop today to introduce to you uh, Direct Edition Lens, or DAL, which is a new method, a brand new method of design and manufacture of multifocal lenses. Fantastic, let's get to it. Yoav was here with us at the training center for almost eight full hours and we covered a lot of ground in that time. What I have done here is, to the best of my ability, assembled my thoughts, my understanding of the technology, and to share with you as much as I can of what Yoav had to say. A couple of disclaimers here before we begin. Disclaimer number one. This is all very much a case of what we know so far or maybe better yet, what I know so far. These lenses are still in development. They have viable lenses out in the marketplace, but those numbers, particularly in the US, are really quite small. Disclaimer number two, we, Laramie K, we have no vested interest in this product. The lab can and will make DAL lenses, but that's as far as it goes. In other words, I'm not trying to sell you something here. This is just something that we felt that you should know about. Disclaimer number three, much of what I say or recall is repeating or paraphrasing what Yoav said when he was here. Now, I don't have a problem with anything he said, and his numbers certainly made sense to me, but it's not like we employ a fact checker here at the training center. With that said, hopefully we can revisit this in a few months time after I've had a chance to make a pair of glasses using direct edition lenses and had time to take them for a test drive. We can start with kind of a big picture idea here. Of course, we all know we've had single vision lenses probably since the 1200s, been around for a few years now. Lined multifocals, we always think of Ben Franklin in 1784. It's been around for a couple of years. We have our PAL or our progressive edition lenses or progressives patented in 1953. Keeping in mind that, that is a compromise lens and a compromised lens. See the other videos on progressives. And now we have in 2015, Quest receiving their patent for the DAL or the direct edition lens. Now, it's not as simple as that. It's not these just four unique things. There've been many, many, many patents and changes over the years. We've had new materials, new designs. We had the fabled unicorn of the mixed index lens. 3D is still trying to find its place in the world. We had the electronic ones. Uh, we had some whiz-bang smoke and mirror stuff, and of course, free form. But this certainly isn't a bad way of thinking about this. So this, is a, this is a very different way of approaching it. So we have our direct edition lens, or our dowels. They are a bifocal lens. They have the potential for being much more than that, but right now, a bifocal. Two distinct independent areas of vision with a very deliberate elimination of the intermediate zone. We'll get there in a second. They use freeform processing, so you eliminate the inventory and the problems of keeping straight top 28s, 35s, 45s, every possible bifocal, every possible trifocal, and every possible add. So inventory greatly reduced, same reason we like using freeform for progressives greatly reduces unwanted, we'll use the term error, peripheral error in this, reduces that, almost sort of eliminates it, but not quite. 
It does that without a line and without image jump. And this was something that came up when we were discussing it. Remember that image jump is created by the change of prism because it goes from here through this prismatic area of the add segment. Um, so jump is created by prism, not by power. Something to put in the back of your head. It is very much not, deliberately not, a progressive lens. We'll get into that in just a, a second. It's kind of odd though, because one, if you look at it, it looks a little like a progressive. It is a no line bifocal, which is what we call progressives, but it's not a progressive. We'll get there in a second. And because of its design, it has a huge increase in the usable fields of vision for both that distance and that near zone. I asked Yoav to send us a couple of lens maps. There they are. There are a couple of different versions of the bifocal, so that's why there are two different maps there. And what I did was try to take those maps and recreate them here on the whiteboard. This way we can take things apart and see a little bit more about how these lenses are constructed. They are said to be of modular construction and component parts make up a modular system. I think of my stereo as the perfect example. I have an amp, a CD player, a turntable, a surround sound, MP3, some nice speakers, and I can change those components. I can upgrade, I can move them around, and I can still have a complete system. Modular construction. In the case of the DAO, we have multiple single vision component parts that make up a single cohesive lens. It combines optical zones and mechanical zones. Optical zone, mechanical zone, optical zone, mechanical zone. Right now, we have the bifocal. One, two. In theory, this is unlimited. This could be a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Could be the octafocal. Eight individual single vision units. Not everybody's gonna know what I'm talking about here, but any of you old timers, you, you remember, I think it was a Giorgio Armani. You had the lens and you had the silicone carrier that went around the outside of the lens. Then you put the silicone carrier into the frame and tighten things down. Well, imagine if you had individual single vision lenses of varying powers or strengths in a silicone carrier that went into a lens. These are the component parts that make up a lens with multiple individual pieces. That's the component nature of the Dow design. Remember that a progressive lens by nature, progressive, amorphous, fluid, is always changing. That's why it's a compromised lens and a compromised lens. The DAL is an individual, independent single vision, separated by a gate, connected with another one, two, three, individual, unique single vision lens. In the bifocal design, we have distance and we have near. The transition between the distance and the near through the gate is done without any image jump at all. There is no ledge. I put the green line there to designate the two areas. There is no line. It's seamless, smooth. It's not a bifocal in the executive sense. You can't tell it's there. Because of the nature of the design, your brain, because remember we only see with our brain, we don't see with our eyes, you just get a zoom in, zoom out perception going between the two. How is this done? Well, as far as I understand it, through freeform processing, careful control of the distribution of hard and soft areas between the optical zones and the mechanical zones. And by that, by the use of the two distinct areas, it greatly opens up the usable space on that lens, particularly over a progressive. Let's talk about what we talked about with Yoav while he was here at the training center. 
just some really interesting little tidbits of information for you. In 2019, just a few short months ago, worldwide of the 700 million pairs of glasses made for people with presbyopia, it was a 60-40 split. 60% of the 700 million people still went with a lined multifocal. Stop and think about that. Maybe, just maybe, progressives are not the answer to everything. Always keep in mind that our loss of accommodation is gradual. You know, it starts at 40, ends around 55. You don't wake up on your 40th birthday and you, know, you can't see near anymore. It's a slow process and we lose that near and then over time until we're 50 and 60, we start losing that full intermediate. Maybe progressive lenses are not the answer to everything. When the only choice was a lined multifocal lens, 90% over 90% of people went with a bifocal, not a trifocal. I'm old enough to remember this. 30 years in the business, I probably saw 30 trifocals in that entire time. Saw 3,000 bifocals. Trifocals, not so much. Why? Maybe because we don't need that intermediate as much as we think we do. Maybe a progressive lens is not the answer to everything. This was a really startling one. The majority of lined bifocal wearers maintain the ability to accommodate, some ability to accommodate, throughout their entire lifetime. You really stop and think about that for a minute. Because nearly all progressive wearers lose that ability after just one year of wear. Really stop and think about that. Think about this again. Gradual over time, 40 to 55. Maybe progressives are not the answer to everything. Pet peeve of mine, just because a lens costs $600, it does not mean it's a better lens. Look, I've said this elsewhere, I could wear absolutely anything I want. Laramie K, we make some of the finest lenses in the entire world. I could wear the top of the line progressive with the best of everything. I wear a lined bifocal because I love them. Let's take a look at how these lenses are constructed. So maybe, just maybe, the future looks just a little bit like the past. We will find out. Hopefully I will get a chance to take a pair of these for a test drive. And once I do that, I'll certainly be back to let you know. Thank you so much for watching. If you are watching me on YouTube, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there in the corner. If you're watching us on Facebook, please give us a like. It does help us out. Make sure that every lens, hey, maybe even a direct edition lens in your optical life comes from Laramie K. And I will see you again next week.